Hello, my name is Michael Garrick, and this is Popping Culture. My guest today is comedian Jordan Century, very funny comedian. Uh, if he's in your city, please, please go see him. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Hey, man, happy to be here. Happy to be back on the show again, man. Definitely, uh, you know, it's always a great conversation. Yes, sir. Uh, Jordan is the biggest Kanye West fan I know. Uh, <laughs> So I definitely wanted him on for this episode. We're reviewing Donda, Kanye West's uh, newest album, uh, his 10th studio album. Uh, also, this is the 10th album to go uh, platinum. It sold more than 300,000 copies. Um, like I said, we're going to review it. Uh, hopefully, we agree on majority of it. Um, but it's, it's, it's going to be uh, a good time. Um, sure. So before we even dig deep into the album, uh, of course, it's Kanye West, so it automatically comes with hype. It comes with like a certain level of what you expect. Uh, before the album dropped, when you heard, because a few songs were leaked, uh, did you already have a mindset of what the album was going to be like, or did it surprise you like all the way through? Yeah, I mean, I think what took away from that surprise element is the fact that he had those listening parties, you know, before the album actually dropped. So with those coming out and me you know, watching all three of those listening parties, it was, for the most part, I would say what I've expected, there, there's that part of like, oh, what happened to this song that you played during the second listening party or whatever and things like that. Um, I think that makes it tricky for fans. Like, that's why you probably shouldn't listen to like the work before the album comes out because then you start to critique it in a way that you wouldn't have if you were just waiting until, until the album came out. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I would say it's what I was expecting. Uh, when it comes to the guests he had at the listening parties, do you think he did that just for like publicity or do you think he's like probably friends with them in real life? Yo, you know, Kanye, like you can never tell, man. And I, just, I feel like both things could be true, honestly. You know what I mean? Like, I think one thing about Kanye that I always liked about him is like, I think everything he does is like authentic regardless of how off the wall it may seem. Like, I really think, like, this is the real Kanye West 100% of the time. I think I've, I've already said that before. Um, so, yeah, I think he knew that that was going to gain some attention, but I also think these are his real friends. I think him and, you know, Kim Kardashian are still close. I think, you know, yeah, everybody that was there, he has some type of relationship with. I think Pete Davidson would say differently. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, man. Um, yo, I, I would never go back to Saturday Night Live. I don't know what it is. If I, <laughs> Kanye seems to have this love-hate relationship with Saturday Night Live. And, like, I'd, I'd have somebody sitting outside Pete Davidson's house right now. <laughs> if I had Kanye's money, allegedly. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't blame you. I definitely, I mean, if anybody has favors, uh, it's definitely Kanye West. He should have some kind of favors he can get. But um, yeah, man, let's just uh, jump it off. Uh, the first song on the album is Donda Chant uh, featuring Selena Johnson. Uh, first time I heard put the album on, I just played it through because that's what I try to do with every album. Uh, I, I literally, if I want, like it's an album I'm looking forward to, I do play all the way through. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. it's a good idea. Sometimes I'm like, who this is a long song. Um, yeah. When it came to Donna Chan, I really realized maybe 30 seconds in, I was like, oh, this is the song. Like, <laughs> it's just, uh, how'd you, what'd you think of it as the intro? You know, I didn't know you could say Donda in so many different ways. You know, so I, I guess props to Selena Johnson for that. But uh, no, I deleted that track immediately. That, that lasted, it was gone as soon as I heard it, man. I mean, I feel like it was with all respect do I guess I mean it was just a waste of space like I feel like it does nothing it doesn't really get me excited to listen to the rest of the album I feel like jail is a perfect way to start the album the next track uh you know only time I want to hear Selena Johnson is when she's singing all falls down like anything other than that or like do something oh, besides the Donna chant yo. something besides the Donna chant I'm just saying that's not that was not it I forgot she used the all fall down. Yeah. Wow. Talk about not forgetting your people. Wow. Okay. That's what I'm saying. So I can't I can't hear you on a song like that and then you do a chant. Like that that doesn't work anymore. Like you can only I I hold you at too high of a level now for you to do anything below that. Yeah, I forgot she was from the wow, the same thing from all oh wow. 
Wow. That's that's wild. Uh, also, I forgot to mention, guys, uh, Donda is his mother's name. So I, I just want to make sure I mention that. So this album is named after his mother. Um, I agree with you completely. This was not this. It just I I don't know if he did this just for his mother in a sense, but I really thought it was not a good way to start the album. Not at all. And I think I heard like different things saying like the the number of times Donda was said on that track was like how old she was or like there was some type of like relation to like the number of times Donda was said on that track that I, I kind of forget about now but either way still just not something that like I would maybe it's good to hear once like just how you said if you're playing the album all the way through but after that there's no need for it anymore oh yeah no nobody's gonna be like you know a song I enjoyed Donda 50 times um, oh yeah that's one of those songs like you get mad to come on shuffle like man I thought I'd like, I really this one yes exactly if somebody plays that on a jukebox be like that's the murderer um, yeah. So we get to the second song of the, uh, on the album Donda Jail. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're right, man. I think this would have definitely been the best song to jump off the album with. Like it, it has a great beat. Uh, Kanye West uh, did a great job with his verses, and Kai and um, Jay Z. He just you know he does what Jay Z does. Um, I mean, I, I think what made the song so great was the fact that Jay was there. And it's not even really necessarily the verse. Like if I'm speaking objectively, that wasn't like by Jay-Z standards and a great verse, but just especially watching the first listening party and him ending the listening party with Jail. And then all of a sudden Jay-Z's like vocals just comes on. It's just like, it it meant more from like knowing their history and like them kind of like being on the outs a little bit and then finally kind of like coming back together again. Um, I think the moment of it was like, what made that song so great and um yeah i mean on, on top of that man yeah just kanye the, the way the the instrumentation on the on the song sounds the way he put together like the, the hook the background vocals like it's just such an amazing track um and uh, we're, not, we're not gonna talk about the second part till later but it it is a part two to that song on the album also uh, not spoiling anything till we get part two, but did you enjoy this one more than part two? Uh, well, uh, so I, I mean, I'll this for the most part, I enjoyed all of the originals more than I did the part twos. Okay. So yeah, so absolutely. Um, the only exception to that would probably be the Jesus Lord track. I think the part two of that was probably better, but I mean, I don't want to skip too far ahead so we can talk about nice. that more when we get there but yeah the original jail track in my opinion is better nice nice uh we'll get to track number three guys because there's a lot of songs on this album he uh definitely uh took a while to put this out but the third track is called god's breath featuring Fori. uh god's breath um guys Kanye West is definitely uh a religious person or uh, definitely uh, makes money saying he is, either way you want to put it. Uh, God's Breath, what did you think first time listening? Man, that was another track that, I mean, of course is better than the Donda chant, like track one, but like still had that issue of like, it was very repetitive. He just kept saying like, I know God breathed. Like that's all he kept saying for the most part with like a few extra lines that are uh, different from that. Um, again, another song that sounds, is cool to listen to once. And admittedly, like if we were listening to this live, like in a stadium or something, I mean, it would be great, but that's another one that like, I, I didn't keep after I heard it. Yeah, I, I put it in the category of workout music. Like I can see myself working out to it, but like yeah. to listen to it every day, I'm just not putting it on the playlist. Yeah, yeah, so. Uh, Yes, yes. Uh, it's sad, but like a few songs on this album, that's really how I feel about it. Just like, it, yeah, he made it. Um, that's it. Well, I feel like you have to feel that way, right? Because it's, I think, how many tracks was it, like 24? Like this album yeah. was close to two hours. Yes, yeah. For no reason. Yeah. <laughs> For no reason, man. There was a lot of wasted space on that album. Yes. Um, and then we'll go to song number four, Off the Grid. Featuring Actually, Viva. Mike, before, before okay, we cool. do that, I have a question for you. How many tracks did you end up keeping on that album? 
uh, in my playlist. Uh, yeah. Four. I kept four songs. Oof. Okay. Uh, how many did you keep if you don't mind me asking? I think I kept like like 17. I kept most of them. But um, yeah, there was a few that I had to, I had, couldn't listen to. And, and, and don't get me wrong, it's just like I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm one of those few people that like, I, I hate to say it because I hate when other people say it, but I am a fan of the old Kanye West. And I get it. You can just listen to his old music. But I hate when yeah. people do that to anybody. But it's, it's, it's the truth. It's like the songs that make me sound like, that sound kind of like the old Kanye West. Plus when Drake came out, like I hate to be one of those people, but when Drake came out, it was kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm the type of nigga that likes singing. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I have no I have no good comeback, but yeah, that's that's pretty much yeah. it. Well, I mean, so I guess did you like Certified Lover Boy better? Yes. Or am yeah. I skipping uh, too far ahead again? Oh, you did. Uh, yeah, I thought Certified Love Boy like just blew it out of the water. But then again, I'm a bigger fan of Drake. Like, like I know yeah. what when it comes to Drake, I know what, what I'm getting. Like, I know everything's gonna be melodies. I know the beats are gonna mm. be certain ways and. I can relate more to Drake, what Drake raps about. Like, Drake is one of the few artists that I know is that, yes, he can rap about being rich, but he also doesn't. He also has a lot of songs not rap about being rich. It's kind of the reason why I like J. Cole. Because J. Cole could, yeah. like, he can stun on everybody. But he also can be, like, tell a great story about, like, when he was, like, dead poor. And I can still relate to poor. <laughs> I feel you, man. I mean, really, I, I guess we're opposites in that regard. Because, like, I kept three or four tracks off the CLB. It was, it was a letdown in my opinion, but I mean, you know, again, teach his own. Oh, I agree. This, this is, this isn't, um, this isn't comeback season. I know that. Like it was definitely not the, the best. This, this isn't about to be the greatest hits. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. No. Nah. Yeah. Um, are you ready to go to the next song? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay, cool. Uh, the next song is off the grid featuring Vivio foreign and Playboy Cardi. Uh, not gonna lie, bro. That was a hit. Okay, front. I like I like the song. Oh, thousand percent. Uh, the five year foreign guy, like I admittedly, I'm not too big in his catalog. I haven't really heard him much before hearing him on this album. But man, like he really did his thing. And Kanye is like really great at like setting up people to have like standout verses on at least on this album, like the way I feel like the beat dropped a little bit and just came back when Fabio got on the track is like uh, that, that was definitely a good to your point workout music, but definitely something that I listen to pretty much regardless of where I'm at. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like this song a lot. And what you just explain again, what you said about Fabio, I really, he felt like, yo, this is my chance. Everybody gonna listen to this album. I can get so many mm -hmm. different, so many people gonna hear my voice that I gotta make sure I go hard. And the guy did a great job. Like in the beat, man. The beat is just special. Like this. And I yeah. what, is it a sample? Like I tried to find if he sampled anything. I couldn't find any samples. I feel like Kanye is one of those people that even when he samples something, he's so meticulous. It'll be such an obscure song that like some Japanese artist made in like 1970. Like there's <laughs> there's no way you'll figure it out unless you just like for some reason was familiar with that artist but yeah man um to your point yeah i think fabio really took this i mean honestly i think there was a couple artists on this album that had like the verse of their career just because they knew like this is a kanye west album and or a yay album i guess we should say now oh yeah that's right yeah uh, <laughs> and like a lot of people were going to hear it yes can you imagine if comedians did that? Like Chris just, well, he couldn't be The Rock anymore because they got The Rock, but if like Chris Rock just became Chris, like he just dropped off The Rock part. Man, it would never work. You know what I mean? Like, especially for a name like that. But yeah, I don't, well, I mean, some comedians go by like one name. I, I don't personally don't do that. But, you know, you got like Earthquake or, yeah, I mean, that's the only one I can think of off the top of my head, but. Yeah, you're right. It, it it wouldn't work too much for us. Yeah, true, true. Um, towards the end of the song, uh, did you like the way the beat uh, drift off, or do you think you would have kept it? You would have liked it more, keeping it high energy. Um. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I guess I I like the I like the fade out. I like fade. Out. I kind of even like that one line, like how he ended it, because album never gives his real. Like that was like. That was a funny Kanye thing to do, like right there at the end. Um, yeah, I like how it ended. 
Nice, nice. Uh, and then we get to track number five, Hurricane. Uh, Kanye West, uh, The Weeknd, featuring Little Baby. Um, Little Baby, bro, he's he's impressing me more and more every time I hear him. Like every time I hear, like little people are trying to say he's the new Lil Wayne. I can't give that to him yet, but like he is on everything right now. He is, man. I mean, I guess like not to go off on too much of a tangent, but like I I heard that song where Lil Baby called himself the Lil Wayne this generation, and like you know there were some people that like would either agree with that or he got like some backlash from the Lil Wayne fans. Um, my thing is, you got to think about that's that's what rappers do like Lil Wayne called himself the best rapper alive and it kind of just became true at that point in time when you think about it T.I. called himself king of the south and you know people ran with that too I mean as a rapper I mean you you almost have to like claim that title for yourself for people to to people to respect even Jay-Z on the black album called himself you know best rapper alive and like people went with that I mean so I mean props to Lil Baby for like just having that confidence to say it um but yeah, this is another one of those artists that like, this may not be like his best verse ever, but it was an amazing verse from Lil Baby. Um, again, just, I feel like it's a common theme in this album. Just like Kanye, Kanye's genius really came through with like the production of the album more so than his like actual verses. Like, I don't think Kanye really out anybody on any track in this album. Is it unfair to say that Kanye was, it's really never mind. You, I'm gonna say it. Do you feel like Kanye West was kind of like DJ Kelly in this album? <laughs> oh, yo, yes, yeah, crazy. <laughs> nah, no, not at all. Only because I'm gonna be honest. I don't know what DJ Kelly does. Like, I really don't. Like, I don't think he actually like makes the beat. Does he? No, he's literally uh, a strategist. So, like, uh, I I got a producer. I got rappers. You guys do the work. I'm gonna make money. That's what I'm saying. You like, I mean, Cali is like a glorified like playlogator. And I mean, I with the exception that like you can actually put artists on a song together. So I mean, that definitely takes some skill to know like who sounds good with what. But like Kanye is just on a whole nother level. Like you're producing the beats, you're like so meticulous that you'll go and update the album a week later and take off somebody's vocals, replace it with your own. Like I think it's just a way like much higher level than what Cali. But I never knew Kanye was did that. Somebody had to like show it to me, and I was like, "So the album's been out for how long?" And he's like, "Yeah, it's been out. He's still changing it." I said, "This, this is amazing." <laughs> like it really is. And I mean, I remember him doing that with the Life of Pablo, too. like going back, adding tracks, changing things. I mean, I really, I really hope that continues to be a trend too. Well, I do and I don't because one, I'm afraid that like some already go back and try to tweak their classic albums. Like, could you imagine Jay Z going back and making changes to the blueprint now? Like, after we've all like become accustomed to what it is and have already like grown like to love that album, and, like you suddenly take off, uh, you don't know. Like, I mean, I couldn't imagine anything like that. If he if he George Lucas that shit, <laughs> I'd be so mad, bro. Like. <laughs> like we do not need CGI for no reason. Just man, put them, yeah. Put them puppets back out there. We need put. We wanted puppets. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Exactly. But, uh, what you think about the weekend, man? You mean on the song or just in general? On the song. We do on the song. We freaking. All, right, all right, all right. I like the weekend. I think the weekend sounded great on the song. Um, I mean, The weekend is always, in my opinion, has been a great vocalist. I mean, he definitely knows what he, he's doing, especially on these songs that are like, I would say pop leaning. You know what I mean? Like this is kind of like starting to become his bag. Um, yeah, and I'm a weekend fan in general. I mean, more of his like earlier stuff than, than like we put out now. But yeah, I think he was a good fit. Somebody told me weekend makes strip club music. And I was like, that's crazy. And then I was in the strip club and I was like, yeah, it is it. You, I'm not seeing it right now. I didn't see it either, buddy. I'm not telling you to go to strip club. But I promise you, once you get there, you'll be like, yeah, this makes sense. Oh, huh. okay. Yeah, that could be T-Pain music, but it's working there too, you know? All right. I'm going I'm to have to go back and like listen to it from, from that perspective. Yeah, it, it blew my mind, brother. <laughs> um, 
And then we get to song number six, Praise. Wow, I went from trip clubs to uh, Praise God, uh, featuring <laughs> featuring Baby Kim and Travis Scott. Baby Kim has impressed me very much, man. Like, this guy really came out of nowhere for me. Um, I don't know how to feel about this guy. I, I mean, he's he's cool. I mean, that, that's all I got, uh, really. Uh, I think he's like Kendrick Lamar's cousin or something like yep. that. That's kind of like how he got put on. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I mean, he, he's cool. And honestly, and it's not because of the Astro World stuff. Like, I've never really been that big on Travis Scott either. Uh, so, yeah, honestly, this is one of the songs I didn't keep. Yeah, me either. I didn't. Uh, yeah. It was definitely one of the weak ones. And, uh, yeah, man, I can guarantee you, man, you give this a week, Travis Scott may not be on this song. Uh, <laughs> well, so I don't know, because you got Kanye's the same dude have Marilyn Manson um, on stage with him. So. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Uh, I think he just got proved innocent, I believe it, uh, last week, I think. Oh, did? Hmm? Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, that's I really have nothing to say. unless you have something else to say about the song. It really didn't do anything for me. Yeah. Um, and then we get the song number seven, Jonah, featuring Lil Durk and Vori. Uh, I'm a big Lil Durk fan. Uh, not of that lifestyle. Like I, I listen to it to I go, I go to my nine to five, which is hilarious. But uh, you know, not wasn't the best song. Not that lifestyle. You know, you know, uh, Chirac do. Uh, nah, man. I just like that he's honest <laughs> about it. He's like, I could be, I could be taking classes, but I'm in a car with hoodlums. I thought that was a good way to, you know. But uh, what did you think of this song? Uh, you know, I like this one. Uh, I, I kind of Dirk is kind of grown as an artist. I will say, uh, definitely not somebody that I listen to on a regular basis. But like, I can definitely tell you, he's, he's improved. Um. And I think this is the one that also has Bori on it too, right? Yeah, Blue, something else. Yeah, Blue Dark I and really Bori. Like, yeah, I really like Bori's hook and even Bori's verse. Um, I like the shot that Kanye took a Drake on the on the song, man. I don't know. Their back and forth is so weird. And like, I know it's supposed to be squashed again, but like, you know, six months from now, it'll be something else, man. I don't, I don't know, man. If, if all those rumors are true about Jay Prince, I would just like be friends for him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, nah, you do not want any problems with Jay Prince. Yeah. Didn't I say y'all were friends? But like, yeah, we friends. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm going to be enemies with two people. Uh, no, anybody that does this finger pistol in like every picture, that's just yeah. that's a warning sign. Yes. I forgot the podcast. Uh, guys, we're going to get right back to the album. But uh, do you, are you a fan of, uh, he's on the Daily Show, the Black Out Daily Show, not Trevor Noah, but. Um, yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about. He was talking about on like the 85 South show. Yes, man, that was yeah. hilarious. He was about to shut the whole podcast down. Like, whoa, wait. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Roy Woods, that's it. Roy Woods, yeah. I haven't got a chance Roy to check Woods. out his new special yet. They were telling me it was good. I'm checking out when I get a chance. But uh, yeah, that story was hilarious. They were just like, oh, whoa, wait. <laughs> um, cool. um, but uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about um, Jonah? No, I mean, good track. One of the ones I kept. Other than that, you know. Nice. And then we get to song number eight. Uh, another song that has a part one and part two. Uh, okay, okay, featuring Little Yachty and Ruga. I mean, I, I've never been like that big on Little Yachty. Honestly, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't. I don't see the appeal. I don't get. I don't get why people like this guy. Um, but I mean, he, he sounds okay on this song. Um, and I, in, in general, the song is like, it was good enough for me to keep, if that makes sense. Like, it's not a song that I run to when I go to them, but like, I'm, I'm not really skip it when it comes on. I put it like this, but it is the beat. This, it isn't the song. This beat is just amazing, but this song is not. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the that beat. Might, it's, yeah. Yeah, I think you might be right. Yeah. Yeah, I was, the whole time I was just like, this, this is the... This is amazing production work. That's what Kanye does, man. He's able to make artists sound way better than they normally are. Yeah, I was, I was just like, he, uh, when I heard this, I was just like, he could have kept Soldier on this. He, he ain't had to cut Soldier Boy. Like, <laughs> he he, he going to keep this. He could have kept Soldier. Soldier had to do at least decent. This, uh, 
Um, Man, Soldier Boy is funny, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is the internet. Like, he's the internet. Um, he really is. Like, I know people like kind of take it as a joke, but he really is like one of the most influential artists of like the past, I don't know, decade or two. Just from the standpoint of like how he utilized the internet. I'm not talking about music, but the way he was like able to market himself. Like, yeah, a lot of rappers learned a lot from him. Oh, yeah. I'm a, and we get like I sorry guys are bouncing around, but the one thing I do remember was Soldier Boy, and it was like he was clear headed, he wasn't drunk, he wasn't high. Like I, he said this maybe in 2012, uh, he had a few partners that he was trying to become help become rappers. Also, I forgot their names, um, but he pretty much said like, "Hey, these guys, they they were lazy, so that was it." And I've just never forgot that. It's just like it's you can bring you can you can't make people want you can want the best, but you can't make people, and you can't be one of those people that just loan money. So. You know, he put people in positions and they were just lazy. Yeah, man. I mean, look, that's all you can do, like, for your friends, honestly. But if they don't take advantage of that, then, like, that, that's on them. You can't keep, like, wasting your own time, your own resources to, like, make it happen for somebody that's not trying to do anything on their end. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. Um, very true. Uh, and then we get to song. Oh, is there anything else you'd like to say about OK, OK? Oh, no, we can keep going. All right. Uh, we get song number nine. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Junya featuring Playboy Cardi. Yeah, I think Junya. I think you got it. Yes. Um, it's another skip for me, buddy. How'd you feel about it? It's another one of those songs that like sound good, but like I couldn't tell you really any of the lyrics. <laughs> Like, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just like to your earlier point, like it's the production carries the song. I can't tell you what they say, but it does sound good while it's on. So. Yes. Oh, that's I all I got. Playboy Cardi was on there. Like, I, I forgot. I, <laughs> I forgot he was even on there. Yes. I listened to this album like twice in the past two, uh, past since I asked you. And um, I, I, I ain't gonna lie, man. I was trying to like, dig deep and try to write notes but like i was like let me just be give real true emotion let me not like try to fluff stuff so i was like i really like so this is one song i just have nothing to add yeah i don't either um the only thing i guess it doesn't a uh, memory when i heard that song the first time was for that first listening party that kanye had and this was when we thought he was going to drop the album right after the first listening party and just uh, I stayed up past midnight way too many because of, because of Kanye. Um, but like I remember he had that one line like I run with the Bucks boy, let me be Giannis. Um, and I was like, I was like Giannis had just won it like two days ago. So I was like, oh, you just recorded this verse, um, which I don't really know if that was like good or bad. Part of me was thinking like, man, you seem like you really waited to the last minute to get up together, and then we'll be we gonna be oh he pushed it back like a month, but. Um, yeah, other than that, that's the only thing. Nothing too special really about the song, but like it, it does make me think about that one thing. Nice. And then we get to song number 10, Believe What I Say. Now, before I even heard the song, when I heard when I read Believe What I Say, I was like, this is this possibly could be very, very religious, or this could be about mm-hmm. politics. Um hearing the song, I was just like, I was not uh too far off, I don't think. Um, what did yeah. you think about this song? Yo, you know what? I feel like this is what Kanye was really trying to to do with the album. It was like a gospel song, but like if you were just hearing it and weren't paying attention to the lyrics, you wouldn't have got that impression. You know what I mean? This is like another one of those songs I think sound would probably sound amazing live. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, definitely one of those I kept. I thought it sounded great. Um, yeah, I thought the instrumentation, like the the production of it, as every other song was amazing. Yeah, I, I think it was just a great track. Nice, nice. Um, I agree, man. Like it was, it, it was one that like I I definitely kept it. Um, I, if, if anything you want to say about it, we'll move to the next one. Yeah, no, nah, nothing else I can really add to that one. <laughs> um and then we get the uh the song 24 which you know straight sunday service straight um gospel i i surprisingly liked it the second time around man like i thought it was good 
Oh, dude, this is one of the tracks like I loved immediately. Like this is something like when Kanye put out Jesus is King, this is what I was expecting that album to sound like. You know what I mean? Like th these types of tracks, man. Like this is just a, a pure gospel song. Kanye, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. He's been taking vocal lessons or what, but he even sounds like he's gotten better as a singer over the years. Not that he really sings a lot, but like he did great. Uh, the 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 choir in the background. Uh, I think I even heard like Chance the Rapper pop up on like yeah. just one line. Yeah, man, it was just it, it it was a great song. That's definitely a song that like I go to. Like as of late, whenever like I like accomplish something or I feel like grateful for something, I just like play that song, man. Like it's definitely like one of the standouts for me on this album. Nice, nice. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I thought I heard Chance. They, did, they didn't give him any credit for the album on that. On um, what I'm looking at right now, but I thought I heard Chance. Uh, that been that been great. They do a gospel song together, and then after that, uh, Kanye West just yells at him for like five minutes. And um, he sorry, I didn't see. No, cool, man. No, I saw it. Okay, I saw it. Yeah. Um, listen, it's it, it, it's Kanye West, man. You gotta know who you're dealing with this guy is like a, a manic when he's like in like that creative process i think he's like admitted to that himself um so yeah you just gotta take it because i mean that he is who he is yeah i think everyone he helped discover or helped blow up more i think i think he does that to them like i can imagine he does mm -hmm. yell at big sean chance the rapper but i doubt he would i doubt he ever yells at like 50 Cent or even Jay-Z at that point. Like, I doubt, like, his tone ever changes. Oh, yeah, no. Kanye knows who the who to not raise his voice at. Uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I don't know. After Chance got yelled at, he probably went home or recorded another album about his wife or something and being married. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, who was in the room? Was it Freddie Gibbs that was in the room? Is somebody in the room when you see them and the guy's just like, shit, all right. Uh, <laughs> Like, yeah, sudden his hand, you just look like, damn, ain't nobody else gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. Like, Might have been me because I know Dame Dash was kind of like up there for those sessions too, I think. Yeah, he wouldn't yell at Dame know. either. Dame, Dame would have pulled. Dame was, like, Dame was like, all right, well, all right, put any of this music out that I'm a part of and I'll sue. Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dame will sue. Um, and then we'll get to the next song. Not gonna lie, bro. Uh, this is the second, my second favorite song on the album, Remote Control. Um, it's Kanye West and Young Thug. And this is my se second favorite song of the album. I, I just enjoyed it from the, the intro to the hook to the verses. Now, you know, Young Thug is Young Thug, but like, just that was a good song. Yeah, Young Thug is a genius. And I, I'll admit, Young Thug is something. Oh yeah, no, Young Thug has really grown on me to be be honest, man. Like I just the way he like utilizes his voice originally I thought annoying, but like I've really grown to like it. And like I don't want to like go off on too much of a tangent, but if you've heard his new album, his new album is like in my opinion, amazing. Uh so yeah, I think Young Thug sounded great on this out on I mean on this track. Uh I don't know. I think we we might need a big soldier. I don't know. I feel like the song might be missing something, man. You got to have to put soldier back on there. No, no. I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna quote the genius Young Thug on the song. I could quote one of his uh, verses. One one thing he says on the song, the genius Young Thug. He says, um, I quote, uh, "I live on the Titanic. Oh, I can write. I can rock your boat, spider." No, see, first thing, you just read the lyrics. It ain't gonna sound right. Uh, I don't know what that spider thing is, though. Like, the spider thing is like, I don't know. I feel like that's some, like, new stuff that I don't know because I ain't from Atlanta. But, yeah, I mean, the the boat got rocked, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> No fighting that one. I would not, uh, no yeah. doubt. <laughs> but uh, this beat, man, is um, it really had that 808 and heartbreak vibe to me. Out of every song in this album, I thought this one had kind of that 808 street lights uh, vibe to it. Ooh, street lights. That's a good one. 
Yeah, I remember that was actually my favorite song off of 808. So yeah, yeah me too. That, but, yeah. Yeah, I can I can now that you mention it, I do I can hear that. Yeah. Um is there anything else you would say before we go to the next song? Did you hear Soldier Boy's verse? Nah, nah, you heard it. I nah, I have not. How how did how did it go? Oh no, I can't I can't quote it for you. I don't I don't know like okay. that, but I mean I kind of right call. Uh I mean, so you have heard it though? Like you've heard the verse in general? Yeah, I played it once. It Soldier could have rewrote that. So it 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 just didn't match with the song at all? It just Soldier that I mean, look, Soldier just that I don't have a single song on his like in my music library. I guess I'll put it like that. I'm just not you. a soldier fan musically. I'm a fan of him as a person. He's like super entertaining. Uh, and I'm rooting for him for like to be successful. I'm just I'm not a fan of his work. Oh, me either. Unless we uh, they got a bunch of lists uh, like Crank That comes back out. Like we have a hundred Crank Dips like the early two thousand tens. Um, I don't think uh, he he's very good at making singles. Uh, albums, not really. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then we go to the next song, Moon, featuring Kit Cuddy and Don Deliver, Deliver, Deliver. Um, okay. I'm not gonna, this was a very smooth song. Like it was, I thought it was pretty smooth, in my opinion. I can't stand Kid Cudi. Huh? I can't stand Kid Cudi. You don't like Kid Cudi? No, I believe the song. <laughs> and the only reason I gave it a chance because it had it was a Kanye West song. Otherwise, I wouldn't even play it. I believe. <laughs> my man said, "Ah, uh-uh, I saw Kid and Cudi. That was enough." Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, um, tell me if I'm going too far with this, but uh, when I was listening to it, especially the chorus, uh, did it give you like Disney vibes at all? Like I thought it kind of sounded like something I would hear on Disney, like a Disney movie. Huh. You know, like now that you put it like that, I can kind of think about like how like Kid Cudi sounded on that song. And yeah, I think I could see that. Yeah, it was, it was definitely going from remote control to this. It definitely had like a whole yeah. different vibe to it. Um, yeah, that's true. I could see that. Um, wouldn't be a Disney movie that I would watch because I'm not trying to hear that track. But you know, <laughs> other than that, <laughs> serious man, I don't get why people like Kid Cudi. I don't get it. Uh, you, you okay? You have a real good job. I'm not going to ask you that, but like. Um, you, I think you know I was going to ask, but yeah. If you, yeah, uh, I, I know where you're going. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Let's stop right there. But yeah, it's his reason why people enjoy his music. Um, mm. and, yeah, if you don't have that, I don't know. We'll stop there. Uh, the next song is uh, <laughs> Heaven and Hell. Uh, Kanye West, he, he really, I think this was one of the songs where I would say, like, Verse wise, he really did good. Like his rhyme scheme, and this, I, I imagine he rewrote this verse multiple times. Yeah, now this is the one that I was like, all right, Kanye, Kanye still got it, like rapping wise. Um, yeah, this is that was a great song that, like, I think was again, would sound great live. Um, definitely the standout as far as Kanye's lyrical ability goes on this album. Um, yeah, and just the way he kind of like set the beat, like to drop back in after he would like rap songs is just, um, he he took this one like very seriously from the standpoint of like how his actual lyrics was coming through. Yes, and it's still very religious. Uh, the quote, one oh, yeah. part of the song, it says, "You pray, we pray too. You pray, we you pray, we pray too. Never too late for him to save you." So it's it's very much um, a religious. Like I said, this is a religious album in some mm-hmm. in some aspects, uh, but he definitely very much leaned into religion, uh, you know, Christian religion with this song. Um, I, I know you're a big fan, of Kanye, West, but like, do you enjoy this aspect, or do you? Do you kind of wish he pulls back from religion? I think Kanye did a better job this album of, yeah, this album 
of like blending like the religious like element with making the music sound good. Uh, I feel like he completely missed with Jesus the King, but like this one, I think he really did his thing on this one. The only thing that I wish is that he would have had an explicit version of the album. Like the the edits like kind of annoy me. I don't, they're not like too much. It's not to a point where like you're bleeping out like half a song or anything, but yeah, I wish there would have been an unedited version of the album, but I think he does a great job of blending the religion to the fact that, again, this is like another one of those songs that like you were just hearing it and you weren't paying too much attention to the lyrics. You wouldn't even like know that this was a gospel song. Yes, yes. And I think that's one of the smoothest things about the song is that unless you really, really pay attention, you would not know. Like you really have mm-hmm. to be paying attention. Um and then we get uh, to the next song, or spoken word, whichever, but well, still song, I guess. Um, Donda. Um, let me make sure that this is correct. Yeah, it's still Donda, features uh, Salone and the world famous Tony Williams. Uh, like I said, spoken word. Um, thought it was good spoken word. Uh, it didn't really make me want to go. Let me listen to it again, but. Uh, for us, for something he named after his mom, I can see why it was important to him. Much respect to his mom. I got rid of the song immediately. I'm not here to listen to the spoken word. Like, unless you are Wale, I try to hear spoken word, like rap. That's what I'm here for. And the next song is uh, Keep My Spirit Alive. <laughs> My man, my man said, I didn't come for this. This is not, that no one was anticipating this. Yeah. I did not spend the five seconds downloading that song to hear you do the, the spoken word. So I'm keeping it real with you, buddy. You ever seen The Water Boy? Yeah, of course. You you sound like the motherfucker, like, well, wake her ass up. <laughs> hey. We got to win them all. <laughs> Holding Kanye to a high standard, man. Gotcha. Oh, I love the real emotion on that. That was okay. Uh, the next song is Keep My Spirit Alive featuring Conway the Machine and West Side Gun. Mm-hmm. That's a great, that's some great features for a song named Keep My Spirit Alive. Conway the Machine and West Side Gun. Um, did, is this one of the songs you kept? This is one of the songs I kept. You know, like I'm not that... I'm not that big on Griselda, but I, I can definitely appreciate like their rapping ability. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely like, you know, Conway's verse, especially, um, yeah, yeah, the the machine, like Conway the machine definitely like his West Side. West Side's cool. He definitely is great with the ad libs, but like hearing these two almost, well, not almost, just makes me wish Benny the Butcher was also on this track. Like, I feel like you can't just have these two and not have Benny on this track. Like, in fact, we could have even taken Kanye off of this one and put Benny on, like, and it would have been great. Uh, but yeah, man, that's why I enjoy this one. Yes. I just want to quote West Side Gun because I imagine Kanye was like, hey, this is still going to be a religious album. Uh, please say something about God. And West Side Gun was like, I got you. In this song, West Side Gun says, flush the work just in time and they rate it. Thank God. And I was hey, like, and I like, only imagine Kanye West being like, okay. Yeah, yeah won't he do it? Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, he understood. Like, he understood what I was asking for. Uh, what did you think of this beat, man? I thought the beat was great. Yeah, I, I mean, the only complaint I really have about the song is I felt like Conway's verse should have been longer. Like, it just yes. felt like it, was, it just felt too brief. Yes, not, but I'm not hating. But, you know, that paycheck was probably easy as hell. Oh, hell Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He was like, this is all you want? All right, well, <laughs> I can do that um, easily. Um, so, okay, at this moment, we are at song number... Sorry about that, brother. Let me pull up. It's track number 16. Getting to track number 16, first time listening, how'd you feel for, like at this point of the album, your first time listening? Track number 16, 
yeah, at this point, I'm I'm imagining I'm getting to like, all right, man, this is we got like another like almost ten tracks to go. Like this is getting kind of ridiculous here. Uh, but also, like, what what was track sixteen? What's the name of that one? The one we just recorded. I mean, the one we just tried. Oh, that was sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was. Uh, yeah. At this point, I mean, I think I actually looked for the first time in the gym, so like a lot of that time I was being productive, but it. At some point in this album, I'm I'm pretty sure like I had to pause it and like come back like <laughs> in a couple hours because it was just like it was just it was a lot of music and when you have like an album as this one, it's hard for you to really appreciate everything that you're hearing because like part of you just wants to like get through the whole thing. Like there's some songs like you probably have to revisit two or three times that you may end up actually liking that you just didn't really get the first time. It's just uh, it's just too much music. Yeah. Um, for me, it was more like I realized that um, it's not an album that I could like completely binge and enjoy. So I remember that that was the song the first time listening where I like I had to go to another album to come back to it like the next day. It was just it was so I'm talking about the first time listening wise. It was just so like, OK. Um, and don't get me wrong, I would hate to use the word reparative, but I'm like I am. I grew up religious. I'm not as religious as I am today. But I also remember having it like not shoved down my throat, but I remember like being enforced being a kid. So to hear yeah. it like now it was kind of like, all right, this is very much being force fed. Don't get me wrong, for like whatever demographic that's really into this, I think they would definitely love it and push it more. But at this point was when I felt like, all right, this is really being shoved now. Man, I, I think that's a great point. I think that we, like, I, I, my Nana used to take me to church all the time, God rest his soul. And I remember she did the same thing for my dad so much so that like by the time he got to like 16, he was just really fed up with like going to church. And, you know, I, he really hasn't been back that much then. I think like when you get to like try to force religion on people, I mean, it, it's a dangerous game. Like I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to instill these values in people and you're trying to like affect them in that way. But you gotta let people come to God on their own because otherwise they're not really going to appreciate it the way that like you're trying to get them to appreciate it. You're going to like develop this negative relationship with religion in them. And it just goes against what you're trying to do. Um, so yeah, I can definitely understand your point of view there. And even while some people will probably be turned off by having so much like religious, uh, so much of a religious element in this album. Um. My last question before we go to the next um next song. Do you feel like just Chance the Rapper just knows how to do it better? Um, so before he put out the big day, I would say yes. Okay. The big day was like such a garbage album that like it kind of ruined like my view of Chance the Rapper. Before that, like color and book, oh man. Yeah, those tracks. You could put those against any of like Kanye's religious tracks, and I'm saying Chance wins. Even if you put it up against like Jesus Walks, like Chance was really, Chance really does do it better, like in his bag. But that last album was not it, man. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, and then we get oh, to the next. Guy, I don't know real quick. There we go. It's getting a little dark in here. All right. Uh, next song. Uh, Jesus Lord featuring J Electronica. Can't lie, man. Please forgive me, anybody that's religious. Also, please forgive me. I don't mean to offend at all. I laughed so hard at the song. I don't know why hearing him say Jesus was the funniest <laughs> shit. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I was like, I don't know why, but like, and the fact that he keeps saying it, it just like, it was the funniest thing ever. Yo, um, so let me, I guess I should also start by saying, like, I don't defend anybody. Um, but that whole story Kanye was telling in his verse, I did not care at all. Like, I mean, God bless anybody going through that. Like, I, I don't care. I'm not here for, like, this Lifetime movie verse. Like, just, <laughs> I wasn't feeling it. Um, and it's bad because, like, you know, Jay Electronica, you know, he did his thing. And then, like, part two with the locks. I mean, that's great, too. But, like, I ended up not keeping either one of those tracks just because I just did not care about Kanye first on this song. 
Yeah, I, I tried so hard to find that sound on TikTok. I, maybe they put it out now, but a couple of weeks ago it wasn't out. I just want to make some kind of video with Jesus. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just the funniest thing ever. And it's stuck in my head even to the day. I don't know why. It's just Jesus. I don't, it's just yeah. it's stupid, but like, it's the funniest <laughs> shit of all. Uh, it's, it's, uh, what did you think of like the mellow beat? Mm. Um, I mean, I thought it sounded good. I, I don't know how well it fits in with the rest of the album. I thought the rest of the album was a little more aggressive, like, you know, instrumentation wise versus this track. Uh, but I enjoyed it. I thought it sounded good. It's just again, like, I just, one, didn't really like Kanye's verse. And then two, like, that's, that's kind of a long song on its own. Like, part two, I think it was like seven and a half minutes. Uh, I forget the one with like just Jay Electronic and Kate, but like it just something that I it was okay, but I got tired of listening to. If that makes sense. I just laughed. I just I, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just laughed at it. Uh, and then we get to the next song, New Again. Dude, I thought Kanye did good on the song. Like I thought, like rapping wise, I thought he did a good job. Yeah, I thought he did a good job. Um, I like Chris's vocals on the song too. I'm curious to what like Chris's verse was at this point because I haven't actually had a chance to listen to it. Um, but yeah, the, another one of those songs is just like, he, he did a great job of like talking about religion without it making it seem in, like too religious, you know what I mean? Yeah, he, he, this was very much not preachy. Yeah, exactly. Um. Like I said, guys, I, it, it's, it's just going to be, it's just that many tracks where, like, I can't, you know, just don't don't have anything else I can really say about it. Is there anything else you want to say about the song? Nah. Uh, and then we get to the next song, Tell the Vision featuring Pop Smoke. Um, for people that don't know, Pop Smoke passed away uh, three years ago now. He um, had a home invasion uh, and was murdered. Um, R.I.P. Pop Smoke. Um but yeah, I just want to make sure I clarify that part. Uh, the hair pop spoke on the Kanye West album, post death, of course. Uh, do you think that just brought more um, attention to the song? Oh yeah, a thousand percent. I'm sure people like respected the like Kanye kind of like paid tribute to Pop Smoke by having them like on the album. Um, and I'm sure I, I'm hoping his family is like receiving whatever money comes from like that being streamed so much from being on Kanye's album. Um, so yeah, I think it was a, you know, it was a nice gesture by, Con by Ye. Uh, another one of those songs, like I, I listened to it once and then I deleted it. And it's not even because it was like a bad song. It just, it didn't, it didn't really feel like it fit in with the album at all. Like, I mean, like it was just, you, I felt like you just took a pop smoke song that like, didn't even seem new and just put it, the same way he put like that uh panda song on the life of pablo all those years back like the same thing is like except for this time you didn't even add anything to it it was literally just pop smoke and that was it um so yeah recipes pop smoke but i felt like this wasn't i didn't keep it i felt like this wasn't needed on the album pop spokes verse doesn't go with anything <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like exactly this like it's very obvious that of course he passed away guys that's why i wanted to make sure i clarified that before i brought up the verse but this is this and, and, and you can't and what i'm saying is you cannot blame pop smoke because he, he did uh this is all kanye west because kanye yeah. west could have formed everything around this verse but instead of doing that he was like let's just put the verse on there and let's see how it sounds yeah exactly it, it doesn't fit yeah it doesn't fit the album at all um, very nice gesture, not a, not the song for me. Um, same. And then we get to Lord, I Need You. Um, like I said, this is a very religious album. Um, it's a very religious song. Um, what did you think about it? Like, I'm gonna be honest, man. I don't think I, I, don't, I didn't keep that one. Um, and with it being so much music, I honestly can't even tell you why I didn't keep this track. I just know that like I look at the name of the song and it like doesn't ring a bell. 
to me at all. So all I can say is like it to me must have just been pretty unmemorable. I'm not even sure if that's a word, but it just didn't do anything for me. Um, and the gist of the song is really just about uh, his upcoming divorce with Kim Kardashian. Um, that's pretty much what the whole song's about, his uh, upcoming divorce. Uh, one part of the song, he says, uh, you had a Benz at 16. I could barely afford an album. Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, I was going to mix up some else. All right, never mind. I really like the song. My bad. Yeah, all right, my bad. I was thinking about something else. No, I really like this song. Okay. Yeah, okay. no, this reminds me kind of like older Kanye. I don't know if you got that sense from it. Yeah, but yeah I did. like you like somebody like mentioning the car and just the way he was rapping on the song. Like it just sounded like a older like Kanye style, man. Um yeah, no, I really like this one. Yeah, because it, it you know, I don't really follow Kanye like that. So to hear like him talk about an upcoming divorce, I was just like, whoa, I thought they were happy. I thought they were just at a show together, a listening party. Like, did she know about this song? Like, you know, like <laughs> Like it just it really caught me off guard because he really goes in about like this isn't working. Yeah, I, I mean I, I like Kanye like his his vulnerability and also like his willingness to be honest about like how other people have come up short, whether they like it or not. Um but yeah, man, but even then like the way he kind of like ended that song is something like life and rhymes of luxury but you came here to show that you still in love with me like mm -hmm. even kind of like him like despite everything that's going on like we they're still sitting here and i want to work this out like I, I i think that was dope and yeah i really enjoyed this track yeah uh i like when you said the devil run the playground but god owns the building yeah i was like i was like i was like he's going for bars with this he's <laughs> and like you said he has a, a high a highly publicized marriage so i think he knew like this song had to have good bars you know so oh for sure this is definitely one of those tracks that's, well i mean in grand kanye fans are going to analyze everything he does but yeah this one was definitely going to be one that you know i don't know the shade room and like those type of walls where like pick out certain lines and, and talk about it yeah and um he did not let them down um yeah that's then we, crazy like as an artist man like it would be tough to be in a relationship with like a high profile recording artist because like anything that they say even if it's not actually about you is going to get pinned on you and like assume that they're talking about you all taylor swift's exes all of them all, all okay. even she has a boyfriend now and her new album is apparently about jake gyllenhaal which I don't know about how the new boyfriend is reacting. I mean, well, she's a, she's almost a billionaire, so I'm pretty sure he's like, yeah, yeah, talk about that motherfucker. But um, right. yeah, yeah, he would tell him how bad he was. Um, my turn is coming soon. But uh, it it just it shows like people like to hear about breakups. It's just something that we all enjoy listening to. I guess we all can relate to breakups. Not too many people can relate to love, apparently. So <laughs> <laughs> that came out totally wrong, but yeah. Nah, I like it. Let's roll with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's why I can. I I I I'm, I don't think comedians should date comedians. I just don't. Like you got to be very very much like know that whatever goes on in your relationship will probably be brought up. Well, yeah, that's true. But I I would say that even if like both people aren't a comedian, it's still going to come up. I feel like that was one of the things I told, you know, my girlfriend I'm with now is like, you know, like our relationship is going to come up at some point. I feel like you have to be with that. Not even only with comedians, probably with like any type of artist, like whether, you know, recording artists, obviously, but even like a painter would probably like make some piece that like reflects how the status of their relationship is. So I, know, I think anybody that's expressive for a living or that is like for a hobby or whatever the case may be, if you're in a relationship with them, you kind of have to like pair that you have to be vulnerable, like even if you don't want to be. Wow, bro. That, wow, that reminds me of something. This is like two years ago. I have a friend. He, uh, he, he They're engaged now, but uh, mm -hmm. she had, she's a painter and she uh, did a portrait of him. And he was like, uh, hey, Let's make the dick longer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I've never seen this. 
I've never seen this portrait for me for obvious reasons, but like mm-hmm. I just remember him telling the story, just like, hey man, I, I was just like, I rem-, you know, she told me not to get hard when she was doing it, but like mm-hmm. now, I'm like, <laughs> if I had known this, I would have took my egg or a blue chew or something. This, I was Yo, like, I don't need. That's hilarious. I told her to change the face. I was like, we don't need people to see see my face. This, like, you want me, you don't want me to leave. That's what this is. I gotta be with you forever with this painting. Um, I wonder where that painting is now. I don't. I don't. We. I'm still. I still talk to him like once a month. I don't. I mean, I'll, I'll definitely laugh, but that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. <laughs> it'd be crazy. That's how she blows up. Like that's the painting that gets her to the next level. <laughs> but like, look, buddy. See, she good. She kept it small. You know. Um, yeah. I got the NFT. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then we get to my favorite song on the album, "Pure Soul." Featuring Shanisa and Roddy Rich. This song, like I said, is my favorite song on the album. From the upbeat uh, production level to Roddy Rich just delivering one of the best hooks of the year to uh, the lyrics. I think everything worked on this song. Dude, if I wasn't such a Jay fan, I would probably agree with you. This is definitely like number two for me, like on the best songs on the album. Again, yeah, Roddy Rich did his thing with the hook, even the verse, like, because Roddy Rich was, like, getting his bag with, like, some of those lines, man. He said, uh, you feel like you trailblaze from the trenches. I felt that one. I was like, man, you spitting, man. And then even Kanye, like, was really getting into it, too, man. Um, what was that one line? He said, I can give a dollar to every person on earth. I was like, yo. <laughs> it was just, like, a classic, arrogant Kanye. I mean, I know you, like, have turned, like, you know, you religion has become more of a major aspect in your life, but I'm glad to see like you still got like this arrogant part of you because that's, I mean, that's really what we love them for. But yeah, man, the hook was great. The verses were great. Like I, uh, same as what you said, the up tempo beat of it was great. Like I really love the song. Yeah, I mean, I, it's not one bad thing I can say about this song. Even the outro with Shanisa. Uh, that the outro, like some outros, make no sense to be there. Her outro, I feel like it mm-hmm. should have been there. I'm glad he kept it. Um, it definitely added like a different factor to the song ending. Um, it's just so many good things they say about it. Uh, the last thing I say is, uh, I could for me, I'll let you continue with the song. Uh, this beat, I don't want to word it. Did it feel kind of like graduation to you in a sense? Or did it feel more new Kanye West when it came to the beat? I would say more new Kanye West. I didn't really get like, even thinking about it now, I don't really hear a graduation. I kind of got like a touch the sky by, oh wait, graduation wasn't touch the sky, was it? Late yeah, registration. Gra- late registration, I'm sorry. Okay. Mm, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm hearing it, but, you know, music yeah, is objective. A- yeah, but this this is just like I said, this is my favorite song oh, on, yeah. the, on the album, like completely. Like he, if he had stopped right here, I'd be like, he did it. Like he he bounced back well. Right. <laughs> um, have you seen Kanye West live, by the way? Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen him on uh, the Watch the Throne tour, and I saw him uh, at the Yeezus concert. Um, after seeing him live, how do you think he, because all these songs have features, like maybe three songs don't have features. Uh, to see him perform these songs live, do you think it's going to take away from uh, some of them since not having the feature with him on tour? Well, actually, look, I got to correct what I just said. It wasn't the Yeezus tour, it was Life of Pablo tour at the floating stage, so I want to correct that. Um, I would say no. And the reason I say no is because, like, one, you know, Kanye is, like, such a seasoned artist. He does a great job with, like, the production of his shows. I think, if anything, you'll hear these songs, and, like, some songs may actually grow on you. Like, some songs you didn't like at first, you may actually like after hearing them live and, like, can be performed. Um, so, yeah, no, I think Kanye will figure out a way to, like, even with, like, those features not necessarily being there, he'll figure out a way to make it enjoyable. And, yeah, I don't think it will take away from the experience. Nice, nice. Um, is there anything that you want to say before we go to the next song? 
I guess just since we're talking about live shows, if you haven't seen Kanye live, like you really should. Like this guy is, a, I mean, I, you can't say the word genius enough. I guess <laughs> when you're talking about gay, but like seriously, the live shows that he does is just it, it's nice, nice. Um, would you put him on the same level of like John Mayer live? You no, know, I've never seen John Mayer live, so I can't. Oh, okay. I can't oh, say. Yeah. Well, well. Okay. Well, now, now I'm curious. Is John Mayer that good? Nah, nah, look, look. I was, I look. I don't know how to word this. I don't know. Like I, fe- I felt things. I, I, I wouldn't say I was gay for an hour and a half, but I felt. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like this dude. Is, like I, I feel the emotions I never felt. Like this is, this is, it's amazing, dude. Like it's yeah. It's you you started about the painting from from a while back, right? I, I, yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, <laughs> great callback. But I was just like, this is. It's just amazing, yeah. It's, it, please go see him, dude. Him and J. Cole, if you get a chance to see him, they put on amazing shows. Uh, so we get to the next song, Come to Life. I uh, I quickly skipped this song, but I I, I listened to it again like yesterday. Yeah. And um, this is definitely one of the songs that uh, you could definitely was uh, missing his mom when he made it. Mm-hmm. Um, this was the one for me this is how the album should have ended. Like, I thought this was the way to end the album. Because again, just like you said, you could definitely tell it was messing with his mom. It was really like just a beautiful, emotional song, like the piano keys and just some singing. It was like, this is like, for the album to be named Donda, this is where it should stop right here. Like, this is a, a great song and a perfect way to end it. And I kind of hate that, <laughs> that he kept going after this song. Um, but yeah, I love the song. This is definitely, I think for me, top five songs on this album. Although I also admit this isn't a song that you would just listen to in any setting. Like you kind of have to, you can't just be playing this like just to add around other people. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, this is definitely a one, uh, I'm in the car by myself song. Like if you, yeah. if I'm in the car with somebody, I'm like, hey man, it's going to be all right. I don't know what's going on, but like, make sure you stay in your lane. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, we could over to the right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I can't say more. This this probably was the best song to like, all right, guys, this is it. Wrap mm-hmm. a bow on it. But uh, Kanye being Kanye and okay, th- you're a big Kanye West fan. More I'm a Kanye West fan, you're more of a Kanye West fan than me. Is this uh-huh. album proof that Kanye West has too many yes men? Uh, I would have said Jesus is King is proof that Kanye has too many yes men. <laughs> like, I think we we saw that before this album. Um, yeah, honestly, I, he doesn't have enough people to challenge him. Now, for being honest, for most of his career, that worked out great. I mean, the first albums, you would say classics, if you, if you ask me, or at least the first two. Um, yeah, I thought this was amazing. Um, you know, like, I mean, so for the most part, he knows what he's doing, but like, there's definitely like certain times where it's like, Kanye, you, you really shouldn't do that, or you know, yeah. But I think he does have a lot of people around that enables him, and that kind of, you know, he gets him in trouble sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then we go on to the rest of the album. Uh, <laughs> no child left behind, featuring uh, Forey. Didn't do it for me, bro. No, nah. and it's kind of like the same way I was, t- um, kind of like the same critique I had for uh, God Breathe on this. Like, you just kept singing, like, No Child Left Behind. Like, and it was just so slow and, like, brooding and, like, I don't know. Like, there, this, it almost, it's not funeral music, but it just seems like something bad's about to happen. Like, I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not trying to hear this song. I'm sorry, I don't know why that's funny. I don't know. It's, it's a funeral <laughs> music. Like I, I was thinking more like bad guy music, but yeah, I, I can see that too. Funeral music. Uh something definitely either happened or it's about to happen. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like a child is about to be left behind forever. Yes. Like yes. This. this is the song they should play for the Sopranos. Um, yeah, that <sighs> and then the end of the song is just him saying, he's done miracles on me. And I was just like. Come on, man! Like this, like this is Creflo Dollar uh, type shit. Like this, 
<laughs> what just like what just happened? Like I I I realized like this is a I just felt hustled on that song. I was just like this isn't this is I feel like he was just like nah I need to have more songs and that was it. You know what's crazy? I remember him using that song for uh that beats commercial with Shakari Richardson. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, it like it sounded better on that commercial than it did on the album. Like, hearing on the album, I guess with no like visual component to add to it, you really get to like realize like how I mean kind of basic that song is. Yes, yes. Thank you for using the word basic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And and, and for anyone that's like, man, they're being too harsh, it's Kanye West. Like Kanye West has already set a standard for himself that we have to keep him at. This isn't Asheroff, you know? Um Asheroff. Yo, that's a crazy reference. Like I, I don't know where you pulled that one from. I I uh I really thought he was gonna be the next big thing. But the next song, um, yeah, I was stupid, man. Uh now everybody's like, what's he doing reviewing music? Uh, okay. I've learned. No, I honestly, I could see, because I mean, come on, Ash, he could rap, like, honestly. Yeah. yeah he yeah. could rap. So, I mean, I'm not, I could see why you would say that. Yeah, I, I still think Sleep in the Bread Owl is one of the best albums, um, in my opinion. Um, and this is where we, we may either agree or, like, disagree completely. Jail Part 2. I thought this was way better than the first one. Mm. I, so, all right, I'll put it like this. The only reason I don't agree with you is because the significance of Jay-Z being on track Kanye West again, in my opinion, outweighs the performance of the baby. Because if I'm being objective and I just compare Jay-Z's verse to the baby's verse, the baby out rapping, that was like the verse of the baby's career. Like, the, he was rapping like his career was on the line. And it kind of was at that point in time. Uh, so, <laughs> no doubt, brother. Yeah. Yeah. No so doubt. the way he did that and the way he even used, because uh, Marilyn Manson is actually on this track too. Like he added like yep. those extra background vocals and not a fan of what he allegedly did, but like I, I'll admit like those vocals did like kind of add a little bit to the to the pre-hook of the song. Um, so yeah, if it wasn't for the fact that part one had Jay Z, I would say this version is better. Yeah, but but that's what I was thinking all the time too. I was like, the baby is just like, look, I have a lot of people that hate me right now. I have this category. I know who my fan base is that's rocking with me. I know the people that are still trying to rock with me. Mm-hmm. If it's any time to grab their attention back, it's here because they're gonna listen to this album. And um, and then naming the song "Jail," I'm pretty sure like didn't hurt at all for uh, the get more uh, more listens um and uh the last thing i'll say about it when it comes to the baby part of the song uh the part of the song where he says uh raised by drug dealers killers and junkies mama couldn't save us because she had to get the and they, you know of course they blanked out whatever he was supposed to say and it says mama couldn't save us because she had to get the money i thought that was just a very good verse to use because it being named Donda after Kanye West's mom, mm-hmm. I thought that was good for him to throw in his mother also. Yeah, a thousand percent. Like, not only was, like, he rapping, like, just on another level, he also, like, wasn't just rapping randomly. Like, it still kind of fit in, in the theme of, you know, the song and the album. Um, and, yeah, man, this is something I wish the baby did more. Like, I really wish he gave us more of those like personal introspective verses like he just makes a lot of like you know the 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 dance club music and i mean i i get it that's his fan base that's what like gets your streams up and gets your money or whatever i mean that's cool but like i know he can like do more and this is the verse like proves like he could just do like so much more and i feel like he really gives his fans uh also and i feel the baby and uh, Kevin Gates, I think they both suffered from the same thing. It felt so good to hear the baby rap on a beat. It didn't sound like every other beat he raps on. Yes. Yes, like, exactly. It, this is a good switch up. Yeah, I was just like, finally, this isn't the same, like, just drum like, it, it, like, it was like, okay, he can rap on other type of instrumentals. Because mm-hmm. I was just like, this, okay, because I was really worried when I saw it. I was just like, he may not be, you know, he may only know one style, but he came through, 
And um, like I said, guys, we're going to go ahead and backtrack saying that uh, I was told I'm mean, the article I read that Maryland was uh, cleared of everything. If that's not true, then what he is, uh, the allegations are horrible. We uh, mm-hmm. also at Pop and Culture, we do not agree with the baby's comments about um, the community that he uh, said about and also about uh, people that have AIDS. Um, that's, we do not agree with that in any way. Yeah, nor, nor do I. I just want to. Oh yeah, no, 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 this yeah. is Jordan. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm just, <laughs> hey, Jordan, I, I was I would have this dang, that's how I was throwing in the bus. Hey, Papa Culture is uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so sorry, Jordan. Okay. Jordan does not agree with any of that also. Okay. Um I'll be real with you, man. The rest of this album is not good. I do not like the rest of this at all. We the rest of these part twos are just um should have been part uh delete bin, like recycle bin. This is who okay okay part two featuring uh Ruga and Shasi Chessa uh man God bro you ever you play video games by chance man I'm trying to get a PS5 I, I guess for like a year now and still have not got it but yeah I used to play when I was younger um so you ever play a video game you're like man and they and they give you a free DLC and you're like, oh man, it's free. So nice of them to give me free DLC. And then you check out the DLC and you're like, I'm so glad this is free. It was a little bit of a bait and switch type thing. Yeah. It was like, if I had paid $5 for this, I'd be very upset. Um, right. That's how I felt about the rest of this uh, album. I was just like, yeah, they're on here, but uh, you could have left them. Yeah. No, I agree, man. I deleted every part two on this album. Because they just, there was a reason why they were part two and not like the main tracks, right? And yeah. yeah, beyond that, like none of the tracks, except for, I would say, Jail Part Two. That's the only one that's like, felt like it added something to the song. The rest of them just didn't feel like they added anything that we didn't already get from part one, but worse. You know, so yeah, I feel like all of those, I deleted all of them. Yes, me too. And join your part two with Playboy Cardi and Ty Dolla Sign. I am the biggest Ty Dolla Sign fan. I got to meet him before he blew up. And like, yeah. dude just puts out hit after hit in my opinion. But even he couldn't fix this. Like, like even he was just like, uh, like he, Great. It, yeah. Like he yeah, I like agree he, a thousand percent. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I just felt like he was like, oh, yeah, Kanye asked me to do it. I'm going to do it. Like, that was it. Yeah, and I was disappointed because usually, like, when him and Kanye link up, man, it's usually, like, amazing. Like, going all the way back to um, Real Friends from the life of Pablo. Like, usually hearing Ty Dolla. Ty Dolla was really one of those artists. You can put on almost any song, and, like, he just knows how to make it better. But this was not not one of those songs. Is it too far to go that he's the new T-Pain? Is that too far? I would say no. And the only okay. reason I say that is because I don't know if it's like being purposefully done or not, but Ty Dolla is not being overused the way T-Pain was back in the day. I felt like you heard from T-Pain so much that we kind of got sick of him for a little bit and it hurt his career. And like, I, I'm glad that he's like kind of getting back, like building his career back up again now. Um, and people are like giving him flowers and appreciating them now. But I don't think Ty Dolla is like, dealing with that same effect. I think every time we hear Ty Dolla, we enjoy him, and it's not the point where like we're annoyed at all, you know? Thank you for admitting that T-Pain did fall off. People like, T-Pain never fell off. I was like, he was on the Mass Singer. Yeah. Uh, like, nobody's on the Mass Singer that's still like, oh, I'm popping now, you know? <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, no, come on. If you on there, or, you know, like Dancing with the Stars, like, go, come on. If you're doing those reality TV shows, you know, Love It Hop, uh, you know, it, you you went downhill. Oh, you love hip hop, like that's how you know, like oh, I was a one hit wonder. Like, like I'm just thinking of all the love hip hop, like One Wish, uh, Ray J, and just like he's like I was popping back in uh, 2000s. You just gotta believe me. Um, yeah, man, that was, that was Brandy's brother. You gotta you gotta recognize him. Yes, and then we get to the last song, Jesus Lord Part Two, featuring J Electronica and Deluxe. Uh, like I said, guys, it was still funny. I still laughed at this one too. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was laughing at this part too. I just, I think it's hilarious. Um, 
I think we've cleared up. Uh, one through ten, what do you give this album? As it's like in full, probably like a seven, honestly, because there's just way too many tracks to cut. But if you cut it down to like the 16 or 17 track album that I have now, I would give it like 8.5. I would definitely give it a six. Um, I always want to give it a six. Like I said, I, 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 I'm not trying to be a hard critic at all. Don't get me wrong. His bad album is better than some people's greatest albums. I just want to clarify that. But it was definitely, um, production-wise, beats are amazing. Uh, Versus-wise, when they hit, they hit. But the reason why I give it six is because when it doesn't, when it doesn't hit, bro, like there's no, there's, there's no the plane taking off. He's just hitting bushes and killing people. Um, yeah. Some of them tracks should have been left on. Yeah, this is a, uh, but I swear I got to find that Soldier Boy verse now. That You have gotten me very interested <laughs> in trying to be like, because like, after hitting the Pop Smoke verse, you just like, dude, how off was Soldier, you know? Uh, I was it, thinking. It was off. <laughs> yes. Hey man, you know that's the weirdest thing about being comedians. We have those weird thoughts. Oh yeah. Because all because all I was thinking when I said that was like, damn, if Soldier had just died, he would have. Okay, uh, he would still be on the album. That's, that's fucked up. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, he still got his interviews that you can watch too. True. Oh yeah, that was a uh, uh, yes, very much. Um, when you put this in the catalog of all his albums, do you think this will still be in the top five out of all 10 of his albums? Oh, top five of his albums? Nah. Nah, I can't do that. Okay. Cool. cool. Um, last thing, because I meant to bring this up in the beginning, but I, uh, better late than never. What did you actually think of the album cover? I didn't like it. Uh, I mean, it was, it, it was nothing. It was literally nothing. And I don't know, maybe there's some like, <laughs> maybe there's some like artistic like element to it that like Kanye, like there's a meaning behind it that I don't understand. But like, yeah, no, it was just a, a blank black like square and that, that's it. And yeah, I'm, I'm not really a fan, but I, I, again, that's not going to like turn me away from listening to the album. So it's not like, you know, detrimental to like how i experienced the album but yeah i think you could have you could have did something yeah uh just looking at the album because at first i thought my phone like maybe like my internet was messing up and like it wasn't loading <laughs> and then i i google it for this and i was like oh no it's just a you know and i maybe that was something for his mom maybe it was something like dealing with his mom being black him being black it might have had a deeper meeting um i hope that's it i hope he wasn't just like i can sell anything look at my shoes um but, uh, okay, my bad, brother. Okay. No, no, no. You get it. You know, weird about Kanye is like for him to be so meticulous about the music, like the past few album covers have been kind of just plain. Like, obviously, Don is the black square. Jesus is King. It was just a picture of the, the P, right? Like the, the vinyl disc. And then the Yay album, I think, was the one before that. And he literally like took that picture away to like the listening party of like the mountains. Uh, and like wrote something on it, right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's weird for him to put so much detail in the music for the past few album covers to be like just so rushed and so like seemingly not that much thought put into it. Yeah. Um, well, thank you, man, so much for coming on and reviewing um, Dondo with me, man. I, uh, if you're still free in the future, I would love for you to review his next project with me if you're ever free. Uh, oh, please yeah. tell uh, people where they can follow you and. Um, if any shows you have coming up yeah absolutely um you can definitely follow me on um, all my socials are just like my name that you see here at post screen um for the most part just one word so yeah easily find me there um i actually got a show coming up this tuesday uh let me give you the date november 16th uh in gastonia we're going to be at grape and barley um i'm featuring for mike and Berg, so definitely looking forward to that uh and then also i got a show at the comedy zone in charlotte on December 7th, I'm uh, going to be on the Funny on the Fly show. So uh, definitely come come check me out. Uh, check me out. Follow me. Uh, and yeah, happy to be on the show, man. Like, I appreciate you having me on again, man. It's always a great conversation. 
we, you know, I appreciate the, the jokes in between the, the critique, man. Um, yeah, thank you. No problem, brother. Thank you for coming on. Thank you guys for watching and listening, and have an amazing day.